Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back. We're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. But before we do, you know, uh, I had brought to your attention about pastors in the United States and I guess all over the world, Christian pastors pastors and, and ministers um, <laughs> basically encouraging everybody to sign this petition for the building of the third temple and all that and, um, I got really passionate about it and uh, told you this was the setting up of Babylon well it kind of triggered my interest into kind of just looking around and seeing what is what in the body of Christ, especially on YouTube and uh, alternative media and, uh, you know, things got revealed to me. I guess I'm still kind of uh, <laughs> naive. And uh, I thank you, Layla, for, you know, you really pointing out to me what you were referring to as this uh, serpent seed doctrine and uh, it, it opened my eyes to something call me naive whatever I do know that men take and pervert the word of God and the truth of it and I didn't realize I guess till it just I got like a smack on the head <laughs> and realize that man takes God's word and just really now I'm talking about humanity again but there is just the truth is the truth it's in the word and um, all we have to do is read it dig deep and it's there it's the way it was originally written but to add to it or to pervert it even to make something, you know, something that was not pleasant that could be shocking to us. God's word has shocked me a lot <laughs> when I dig in. I had no idea till I dug that there was some pretty profane stories in the Bible. I really did not know that. Until I studied it all for myself. And. Uh, I know. I knew there there were teachers that. Put their own twist and things like that on it. And uh, I've really. Done my best. Not to ever do that. It I strictly go by. What it says. And I've looked at the Septuagint. Uh, as far as. What's been translated. I am not a person who reads Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic, but I've relied on reliable sources, and I've shared those with you, but, you know, there are ancient writings, and I can see why people steer away from Enoch and things like that, and the only way I would, I ever read Enoch or things like that was I had to be grounded in the truth first because then you know if it goes against what's in the Bible if it if it does not line up you know immediately and you don't you discard it and uh, It is true that the old King James had the Apocrypha in it, and they did remove it. And a lot of people aren't aware of that, but they did. To me, it's neither here nor there, really. I mean, it's all in there for us to know. There's, a, there's what's in the Bible as it sits now is purely enough when we use the right tools for us to understand but heaven forbid that these people come in and have really 
perverted the word of God. And uh, the answers are all there. I had a lot of questions as a kid. You know, well, where did these people from the land of Nod come from that Cain married and all that? And, you know, it never made any sense to me, and I never got a straight answer from any minister, pastor, whatever. They just skim over it and don't answer your question. And the answers were there and are there. But here's what I'm seeing. And um, I was shocked because... Little did I know that some people that are on YouTube have these roots in, <clears throat> like, uh, the Sumerian texts and, let me tell you about the Sumerian texts. Those are not documented truth at all. It's actually in opposition to God's word. And I believe that people that get into this and are not rooted in Christ and the truth and do not really have that bond with, with Christ in their heart and have not rendered their hearts these doctrines overtake them and they just cancel out the truth of the word. Now, yes, are there mistakes in there? Yes, they are, but they're easy to pick out. And I used it as an example of Easter. The word Easter in Acts is not even near a correct translation. And uh, I did a video long time ago about Easter being pagan and then nobody watched it <laughs> I didn't I think it it got like the least views of all my videos but here's the thing and I don't want to like point fingers and say names because I just don't do that unless it's in an article or something and I'm gonna say hey you don't do this um, but many are getting very wealthy from mixing God's truth, the history, the craziness of Genesis, okay? It was crazy, everyone. It was. It, it, God, it was a new time, and Satan couldn't stand it because he knew, he knew Christ was going to come through Eve, and he knew that was going to be the seed line, and he could not stand it, because he was, like Layla says in her, in her comments on my last video, that he was a cherubim. Yes, he was the cherubim that covereth. It's Ezekiel 28, I do believe, and it talk, God talks about how he made him the perfect pattern. He made him beautiful. He made him the cherubim that covereth. He was he had the pipes and was over the worship and the, he was guarding the mercy seat. And this is why when they um, built the Ark of the Covenant and did it the way God said, and it was, it was a supernatural, powerful thing, okay? Because people that didn't do it right or even came near it, touched it, were killed instantly. And uh, they had them, he had them put the cherubims on the four corners. And um, you know, he wanted that mercy seat, he wanted to be Christ. Well, how? What? Oh, oh gosh, you know, just and I'll tell you, his spirit gets into people and. Whether they're well-meaning or not, we have to be on our toes. And I've always told you, always told you, you don't have to believe me. Please investigate anything I say. I do not expect you to trust me. We trust our Lord 
and Savior. We trust our God. We trust Him by Him leading us with the Holy Spirit. It is not an insult to me if someone wants to ask a question. It is not an insult if someone says, well, I don't believe that. That's fine. I only am going to take you where it says it in the scripture. I'm only going to take it to the way it is documented. I'm not going, I will tell you if this is something is just my thoughts or beliefs or opinion. And that does not make it right if it is just my thoughts. So I distinguish between the two. But a lot of of time. I'm just seeing it. It's it, it's like a virus. And then we have the ones who are taking the chaos and the degradation and the evil that happened in Genesis and uh, that God did away with it. And I have told you that the Geber, the giants, look, God did not create those souls. It is they are demonic souls. And, um, but there is a lot going on in the Christian community online that would have you believe it's going to be a complete science fiction dinosaurs roaming the earth and, uh, that does not line up with what God's word says about the end times. Okay. And it's for shock value, scare value. It is for money. <laughs> and, uh, unfortunately a pastor that I did really like, <laughs> I mean, I did, I, I don't think he's some great teacher in the word cause it's really, that's not where I went to get fed. And, uh, it was just, I enjoyed him delivering the biblical news of the day of the end times and lining it up. But then it started going way over there. And, um, like I said, I was shocked absolutely shocked to find that someone that I listened to on YouTube, not for preaching or anything, <clears throat> just for more what's going on with the earth and, and the heavens and things like that. Uh, never went to them for a teaching. And to find out that they, it was said three years ago, found the video myself, you know, I go to the horse's mouth. I don't believe what anybody tells me about anybody else because I know how people can be and they will, look, people said bad things about me, but you wouldn't believe, you guys would not believe some of these horrific messages that are totally nonsense, just vulgarity that, that come. I do never let those get posted. Never. Um, there's no purpose for it. You know what I do when I, cause I know a demon when I hear one or read what a demon writes. Okay. Someone who's completely overtaken and I get these people on here and you know, I cast it, I cast it out and I ask God for protection over that soul and to restore it and to lead it to his truth. And obviously, you know, they heard my voice. They heard something I said. Or else they wouldn't have even been on my channel to comment. So, I pray for that individual. And, um, I don't get a whole, whole lot of them. It's not like I get a slew of them every day. But they come. <laughs> and they get here. And... There, there is a great falling away, everyone. And you hold that word close. You heard it. You hold it 
so tight to your heart. You bind your heart with it <laughs> because there is such, such deception going around. And uh, what's sad is because I do see ministries like the one I was telling you about that I don't really get fed there at all. I do my own feeding. I dig, dig, dig. And uh, I guess that's what a life of hurt and heartache and pain does. It drives you into the Word. And God builds you up. And uh, I can tell you, uh, I told you not too long ago, something happened that uh, I just couldn't take it anymore. And uh, I was broken. It's just over the summer. And uh, I, I, it made me physically ill. I had to go to the bed and lay down and I really thought I was never going to get up and uh, I didn't want to get up my flesh didn't my, my heart was just broken and uh, in only a way your heart can get broken that is just you don't think you'll recover and I'm not talking about a relationship or It's, as a mother, you have one driven purpose. You know you're responsible for that soul God gave you to raise. And uh, some are more difficult than others. And some have, I've told you, my son has a brain injury. And it's caused him a lot of problems. And it's been very difficult. And it's been over 18 years. And I don't know how, other than the grace of God, and that is the only, only answer that I'm here. And even that I, that I would not be drooling and, you know, like catatonic, state of shock I'm not lying to you that's the truth and uh, something occurred my son was very very ill and it it took me to my knees and um I didn't think I was going to get back up, and I, when I was a teenager and young, I play hooky from school, okay? I did. It was not anything to do with school as far as learning and obeying and doing the work. I was a good student. But by what happened to me as a child, very young, you know, before I even started school, I've told you. And uh, every time I was expected to undress and change. And in my school, there was no, you were not allowed to go in the bathroom stall. You were not allowed to have any privacy. And... Uh, that just could not happen with me. And so I would just skip school. I would start it out. I'd skip the class. And uh, they would find me in the bathroom, take me, make me go. And so I eventually just didn't go to school that day. I would not go to school on those days. I just absolutely would not go. My mom would even drive me there, take me in. 
walk me to the front door, put me in the door, and out the back I would go. <laughs> so I played hooky, and I remember, obviously it was the Holy Spirit, made me feel so convicted, and it, you know, I would say to myself and discuss this with myself and in my own heart, and I'd be, I felt like a failure, I felt like I was missing out on my education just because of this one thing that had me frozen and traumatized, and I was a very, very private a uh, modest person and it was just pure living hell to me to have to do that and change my clothes in front of people and uh, I used to do it in the stall and I got detention and you know and it come to find out <clears throat> years and years later right that, you know, there were so many teachers that were perverted, male and female, over the physical education department. <laughs> I tried to tell my mom, she didn't believe me. So, she had, she had no understanding what I was, my real problem was, she just thought I was just a, being a horrible child and disobedient. That's what she thought. And it put a rift between us. Because she, she was all about education. She was all about determined. She was determined for her children to be educated. She was a good mom. She was stern and strict, but she meant it for your well-being. And uh, she was like dealing with a military mom, but my mom was the... Uh, strong one of the family. She, my dad was not the disciplinarian, believe me. My dad was, it was like role reversal in my house. <laughs> my dad was the sweetest thing. I mean, you know, you didn't want him mad at you. I didn't even have to worry about that. Because if he just looked at me like he had any kind of disdain for what I had done or said, I was crushed. That was it. You know, my mom, boy, I, I didn't, I knew she'd beat me with a belt. I knew she would. And um, she was stern. And uh, but I'd still do it, you know. Um, what's my point? My point is that the, that I felt that same feeling when I was laying there in my bed last summer. And I did not ever want to get up again. And uh, I felt that nagging feeling like you're not living up to what you are is expected of you. And um, regardless of what's going on in your personal life and your own heartbreak and what seems insurmountable without God. And so I felt... The Holy Spirit, tell me, get up now. And uh, I did. I got up and I went back to being about my father's business. And uh, he got me through that. He got me through that. And uh, what hurts me in all this that's being going on in alternative media ministries and things like that is that many are deceived and have no idea and uh, what is the truth and what really God's Word says even though many of these this one pastor brings a lot of souls to Christ but then I started questioning how do I know that I mean, if everything else is all smoke and mirrors, how do you know that's how many souls he's bringing? I, I don't know. You see what I'm saying? I had, 
Now look, there's no denying Billy Graham touched so many lives and brought so many people to Jesus Christ. Perfect? No. But did he do whatever his assignment was? I believe he did. Now, you know, look, he said some bizarre things and uh, it all ends up in the end times. You just don't know until the Holy Spirit reveals to you who's who and what's what. And uh, I know I, I heard that he said some bizarre things to Larry King in the latter times, but <clears throat> whatever, you know, <clears throat> I was never a follower of Bob, Billy Graham, but I knew in my generation, many were brought to the Lord with him, period. That's just, that's the truth. And, um, I do know that that covers a multitude of sins, but the thing is that It's just getting the the truth, <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> that is not being used. This is why I said to you, what a couple months ago, it's got anything to do with money. Just kind of discount it because I'm telling you, if it's got anything to do with money at this stage, at this stage. Really look at it, examine it very carefully. If they're selling anything, if they're wanting anything, if they're begging for money, just just walk away, everybody. Just because it's far beyond about money now, and God does make a way for us to get the truth out there. And uh, to share the gospel, the good news, the plan, the revealing, without taking one dime. And uh, he will make a way. He will. He really will. And, um, it's all part of Babylon, everybody. You gotta be very careful. Very, very, very careful. And I think the money thing is the first sign. It really is. <clears throat> they're selling anything, they're selling books, and they're selling this and that, and, uh, just listen closely to their words. Because not long after I was really shaken up about the signing the petition for the building the third temple kind of thing, um, it came right out of their own mouth. And it's like about money. And it was a comment that many probably just skimmed over. And even it, people in their congregation were saying it to them about paying all their bills off. And, um, you know, God does not say from the ministry now. This is what I'm saying. Okay. Money from the ministry would pay off their mortgage. Okay, God does not tell us that in the end times he's going to pay off all our bills. He does not tell you that. He tells you to come out of her, my people. Which, talking about Babylon, money is all in there, everybody. It's going to be all about the money that people take the mark of the beast. So if a ministry is attached to money... And that's the only reason they're there. Now, I'm not saying that some of them don't send out Bibles and 
things like that. But when you take it and start talking about paying off your mortgage, it's nothing wrong with a pastor that gets paid for his leadership in a congregation. But um, it's not to become... Uh, I only think that's appropriate for some things, too, sometimes. It just depends on the situation. That's in God's hands. But it does not take that. Because if you're doing God's work, and he's pleased with it, and he, he knows you're doing the best he's as he's directing you, doesn't mean you don't make a mistake or, you know, we're all human beings. A mistake is an error, you know. In just saying the wrong word or something. That happens. <laughs> and that's why we should communicate and say, hey, you know, give me clarification here. But this this is just getting out of hand. And uh, I want you all to be aware of that. Because it's all part of that invisible beast and the deception. And uh, money is your first clue. Just that's how I've... <laughs> that's how I've been led to... No. It's all about money. Selling stuff. Well. Because. How embarrassing is it. That you. Would support something. And then find out that three years ago. They said the Old Testament was written by Satan. Yeah. These are the kind of things I'm finding out about. And it's like, that's that's what I found out about the person that gives you what's going on with the earth and the, the heavens and the planets, and the comets. And I had no idea. I had no idea. So... I guess it ties right into what we're talking about with the Invisible Beast. Well, we spent half an hour talking about this, so let's dig in. Uh, righty. Let's look at uh, Revelation. Let's go back to count the number of the beast, okay? Let's, let's look at it one more time. Because... It is the way that uh, he tells us to look at it because he says, here is wisdom. All right, this is Revelation 13, 18. And remember what I told you about the, the biblical numerics, not numerology. <laughs> I'll make that very clear. God's numbers have a meaning, and uh, he puts them in that order for a purpose. For you to follow the understanding of what he's saying in that verse. I mean, that's how beautiful the, the, the Word of God is tied to his creation. And... Uh, Meaning, not even one verse is out of place, as far as a number even. I mean, now in the translation, sometimes things get put ahead instead of, you know, whereas it should follow or vice versa, and it gets all mixed up. But you have to realize the Hebrew, especially the Hebrew, they... It's, it's a completely different way and of, of writing. And words in the Hebrew, there are words there that do not have an English equivalent. I mean, it's a very unique language, written language. So, and then you have in the Greek, like Paul spoke colloquial Greek. 
Well, that's slang. It's like street slang. Okay, you, they call things by a different name. Kind of like we do. And that gets lost sometimes. But God's, God's creation of his word is just perfect. If it's in there, there's a way to, to find out exactly what it means and the truth. And that should be our quest. So, we're going to go to Revelation 13, 18. Before we do, let's say a prayer. And we're going to quote what we always quote. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Dear Lord, we enter into your word today. We ask that only your truth be spoken, that you put the, your Holy Spirit over us, so that we may... Unite as one body in your word, in your truth. Lord, we know there are many, many deceptors these days that creep in. Unawares and awares. And Father, we ask that you give us the strength, the Holy Spirit, and be bolted to the rock of Christ. And arm ourselves with the mind and heart of Christ to merge with him as one in his truth, in his word. For your protection, for your loyal ones these days. And that no one be swept away from the lies. It is a dangerous time, Lord, we see it. The falling away is happening before our eyes, and they wish to entrap many. And Father, it's only through your sealing and through your Holy Spirit, your hand, and your guidance, and your word, your true word, that we are able to withstand the flood of lies coming out of the dragon's mouth. Father, we ask that you reveal all things that you would have us know in this Bible study today and in the days to come up until the day you tell us not to share your word and to be silent. And we go to wherever it is that you have prepared for us. Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, Yeshua, your son, Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you for all that you've done for us and do for us and have done for us. In Jesus' blessed holy name, amen. Well, the dragon is opening his mouth a lot lately. We cannot be carried away by the flood of lies, and that's what exactly what it is to everybody, and uh, it's going to come at us, and uh, we cannot be shaken. Don't lose your peace, um, you know, because I'll tell you, you have to be very careful, even with righteous indignation, or righteous anger, uh, that anger can get in your heart, there's a right way and a wrong way. And it takes practice. And, uh, you know, when we get angry, we lose it. We've already lost the battle. So, I learned that raising teenagers. <laughs> oh. But they still make you want to pull your hair out, even when they're grown. Okay. So, remember... The number 13. We're going to Revelation 13, 18. And the number 13 means apostasy, depravity, and rebellion. And 18, of course, means bondage. 
So is it any wonder that count the number of beasts would be in that verse? I mean, perfect. But he's giving us his wisdom. And he says, and I'm reading out of the greens. He says, here is wisdom. Let the one having reason count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and its number is 666. Well, we know that 6 is the number of man, the weakness of man, the manifestation of sin, and the evils of Satan. So it's tripled. And he's going to be standing as that second beast. And he's invisible right now. But believe me, you can put your pulse, put your finger on the pulse, what's being said, what's being spewed. And, um, you know, right now, as we speak, uh, certain people are having guests that are just all about making money out of books. And believe me, they're very wealthy from it, from using, combining Genesis with science fiction and the gospel. And, uh, you know, they will go in another arena that's not Christian and tout their book and uh, don't even talk about Christ. And that's not the way we work, everybody. Everyone should know who you are and your belief and what you stand on. And it ain't to sell a book, okay? Um, we got the book. Don't waste your time reading these books about aliens and Nephilim and all this other stuff. I'm telling you. I, I always like Steve Quayle. But, you know, I'm just saying, here's what happens. And I've seen this. I've seen this. My own witnessed it. And uh, people that get any kind of false doctrine from a man will get their spirit. You'll see their spirit turn. They'll eat their own brethren. Okay? And uh, they think that they're the authority. And that they know something everybody else doesn't know. <laughs> that they're some kind of special elect. And uh, they've been given sight. And then they go and eat their brothers for lunch. That are... <laughs> Please be aware. Just be aware. Because, <clears throat> you know, if you're in a congregation and there's no respect and love between the brethren and they think they're the bro the, the Church of Philadelphia, the, the Church of Brotherly Love, which is the elect, guys. I mean, the two witnesses represent the two churches that were pleasing to God. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you're admonishing your brother because... Truly, you know that what is being said is not in the Word of God. You, you've dug it through it yourself. You've left nothing uncovered. You're like that woman who lost her inheritance and a precious jewel in her house. And you've turned everything upside down. And you know you can stand on it. That's how you can stand on it. And when you see that inside the body of one congregation who claims to be special <clears throat> and kicks the little lambs <clears throat> has no patience for a lamb and uh, there's a difference between a lamb and a wolf in sheep's clothing everybody there's, there's a difference between a, an innocent question asked to learn versus somebody who's trying to weave in a doctrine of devils Guys, it's, it's getting late in the hour. It really is. <laughs> it is. No doubt in my mind. Um, thank you, Lord, for showing me what you've shown me. And you've led me away from that type of stuff. Thank you, Lord. I'm so appreciative. I'm so appreciative. And thank you for any wisdom you've given me that's kept me protected. Thank you.
and I'm willing to share it because I want my brothers and sisters to know the truth. And um, Lord help us. That's all I know. Lord help us. Okay, we're going to pick apart this word again. Count the number of the beast. Here is wisdom. Okay. Uh, well, wisdom, the word is Sophia. Okay. And he wants us to have this. It's the wisdom of the higher or lower worldly or spiritual wisdom. Well, we know if it's coming from God and he's saying it's his wisdom. It, it is from him. It is spiritual, high spiritual. It's not worldly. It is from him and his word. It is used of the knowledge of very diverse matters so that the shade of meaning in which the word is taken must be discovered from the context in every particular case. The wisdom which belongs to men the varied knowledge of things humans and divine acquired by acuteness and experience and summed up in Maximus and Proverbs. Yes, remember, Solomon was the wisest king, everybody, and he took those 666 talents of gold and uh, he fell. He got in bed with the king of Tyre who befriended his father and him and built the palace for David and built Solomon's palace and his king and his uh in the temple and uh, it's going to happen again I'm telling you it's going to happen again and uh, you know God will reveal his mystery of his kingdom and the mystery of Christ to you he wants you to know that mystery he's put it in his word He's he gives it to you with the Holy Spirit and uh, it's the intelligence invented in discovering the meaning of some mysterious number or vision, such as Revelation 13, 18, and 17, 9. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about. Because, believe me, it is just this beast is spiritual. Now there is a world body of the first beast. It is doing things. It's producing things. It is technology. That beast is right in our face, everybody. But many do not see it. And when they cling to kingdoms, okay, who's over the kingdoms in, of this world? Well, Satan is. It's his role. He was yanked from being a cherubim that covereth the mercy seat and of worship and he was pulled and he's still over the key he's still the king over the kingdoms of trafficking and merchandise and all that that's obvious that's obvious everyone um listen god said to his people come out of her my people out of Babylon talking about come out of Babylon listen that means there's that his people are in there and he says come out of her my people and he meant it he meant it and it is for today and do not let these deceivers that have made friends with their demons okay and that's exactly what I believe it is they've become not just their friends they become their lovers and their intimate voice they listen to and they think it's the voice of God. And um, they're going to be so, so sorry. And they're going to be, for every little naive soul that does not know how to stand on the rock, that they pull off and deceive with these lies, they're going to wish they were never born. I... I pity them. I really do. And uh, they're going to be over there with the spiritually dead in the millennium, naked, 
and afraid, knowing they are at risk of being put in the lake of fire. They are going to be confounded, okay? They are. And uh, there's a lot to be said about blaspheming the Holy Spirit, and that is the unforgivable sin. And, you know, that comes dang close if that's not it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, oh, Lord, help us. It's, it's, a, it's a dangerous time. It's dangerous. And that's why I'm here. Because, like I said, you don't have to believe everything I say. You can disagree. I still love you. And uh, I still am here for you. And if there's one thing, we might not agree on exactly everything in the meaning of the Word of God. And that's okay. But when it comes to something that is a devil whispering in your ear and you listen to Zechariah Sitchin and all these Sumerian texts and all this stuff, let me tell you something. There are spirits in that stuff. And they, it, that is what people used to try to get me to read the, pro, pro, the protocol of the elders of Zion. No thank you. No thank you. I mean, that goes too far. <laughs> I knew it was dangerous. The Lord put a stop sign there and said, no, 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 no. I don't need to know all that. See, because then when you dig way outside the word for truth in what the devil is doing, then you are giving him more attention and more credence and you're standing on his doctrine. And it deceit. I've seen it. I've seen what it does to souls. And the next thing you know, they are just you can see by their words and their the what they say and the way they say it that they have a they have made friends with a demon and eventually if you don't overcome and go back and get right on the right path and repent then what's going to happen is that demon is going to then you're in then and getting in bed with it and then the next thing you know it's your lover and then the next thing you know it's your god and this is exactly what happens to the harlot God help us. And, you know, it's bad enough you do it to your own soul. But then you want to do it to others, little lambs? That's when you're going to... Oh, you're going to be standing there naked, covered in blood. That's what you're going to be. But the, I'm not talking to any of my precious friends here either talking about little demon voices that come in here and want to chop up the sheep uh, uh no I won't have it pray for these people they're, they're totally beguiled you know it's one thing if you do something that's a sin and uh, it's not affecting anybody else and that's between you and God and your personal relationship with Him. It's time to work those things out, you know. But when you put it upon others, that's what, that's what the spirit is, everybody. I mean, that's the spirit of this world today. It's about taking their spirit that they've made friends with from the devil and pushing it on the innocent. And that is what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's happening now. And these people think they are the authority, but yet they will condemn those that are acting like Sodom and Gomorrah when they're doing it spiritually, which is even worse. Ugh, God help us. See why he has to come, guys? See why he won't let this go on much longer? Mm-mm-mm. Okay. K. 
count. We're going to go back over that. Well, it means arithmetic, which is just where we get our word arithmetic, okay? You know, uh, a lot of our words are based on the Greek, and uh, all medical terminology is based on the Greek, by the way. Okay, arithmos, it means a number, as reckoned, a number. Just what it means. Okay. Count. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a number. I got, I'm all upset. <laughs> I'm sorry. I looked at the wrong line. Count. G5585. That was the word number. Duh. Okay. Sorry. I just dealt with something. So. The word is Svezio. Okay. Count. G5585. Mm. Means to count with pebbles and to use pebbles in enumeration to compute, to count. To give one's vote by casting a pebble into the urn to decide by voting. Do you remember us talking about this? Is this, is this ringing any bells? And uh, it is the root. The root word of it is G5586. And it means a pebble as worn smooth by handling by implication use of as a counter or ballot, a verdict, acquittal, or ticket of admission, a vote, a stone, a voice. Okay, remember what I told you? In the ancient courts of justice, they used black pebbles to condemn and acquitted by white pebbles. All right, these were handled over and over and over, like casting a vote, casting a ballot. They were handled over and over and over to where they were worn down. And it's like wearing the people down, wearing the people out. Keep on throwing all this in their face, and they're so tired, and they just start casting their ballot verdicts. Now, here's the thing I want you to remember about the beast, okay? He hates the harlot. He hates her, right? She rides it. She rides that beast. But he hate the beast hates her. But she's riding it. Okay. Now. The first beast. Is the governmental system. Okay. And. It starts out as political. And it goes to religious. And it goes to. Oppressive. And, uh, the beast, as we know, let's look at what's going on with the beast, the seat of the beast today, which would be the one world body of the United Nations, okay? Which I told you what their agenda is. Their agenda is to just totally brainwash you to, they're getting, they're setting everything up for their father. And, uh. Many in there know what they're doing. Many probably can be in there that don't know what they're doing. Uh, they're blinded. And they're, do they're just doing what they think is their job. Okay? But the ones that are really got an agenda are going to use technology and political powers of their kingdoms to bring in the beast. And guess what? God gives them, makes them give it over. Okay? To them. Their power to the beast. Alright? When Satan shows up, the little horn, he's, he, God is in control, everybody. So he's going to make these kings of the earth give their kingdoms over to the beast for one out. Okay? Well, let's think about this. Right now, that beast that's sitting at the United Nations, that's looking for an entity, an answer, something to lead and pull it all together, they're looking for that, right? I mean, that's, and, and they're consumed and obsessed with Israel, the nation of Israel today, 
okay, in Jerusalem. They're obsessed with it. It's like they can't help themselves. They're not worried about the little starving children anymore. They're not worried about uh, the things that the world body should be worried about humanitarian-wise. And, um, I mean, look at the United States, everybody. I mean, we are the most wealthiest country per GDP, okay? And where's the homeless? What's going on with the homeless? Think about that. What's going on with the least of these? And they're left out to suffer. They're not treated humanely. As a matter of fact, in my city, they're rounding them all up and taking them to this place. And it's a jail. Mm-hmm. It's a jail. They had a real problem with the homeless. And it's jail. It's not the county jail. It's a specific building just built for them. And it is a jail. So, I have, you know, having a son with the issues he has and the resources that are supposed to be there for the handicapped, um, they're not. They send him in the same old dysfunctional circles and of course his memory is very poor and he doesn't realize he's going back around the same circle of dysfunction that supposedly is what there to help him. And I'm like, honey, you've already done this. These are the same people you went to before and he came out of there crying because he's like, there's no hope for me. There's no future. They don't want to help me. And it's just red tape, red tape, red tape. Dysfunctional circle. The mental health system's the same way, everybody. And now, the mentally ill and the homeless, which is most of what the homeless are, they're, a lot of them are veterans that are entitled to things that they should not be homeless. And um, it's a crime. It's a crime. And then they let it. They, they encourage it to fall apart. They encourage. They traumatize these people. I've seen it. It's broken my heart. I, I, I'm not even going to tell you what I have seen and had to endure to watch my son endure. And uh, all in the name of help. Okay? It's, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. It's ignorance and it's purposed. And uh, those people are in grave danger, everybody. They need our prayers. And uh, they are weak. They're, they're, that whatever's reason their brains are not right and they don't understand and the devil just makes mincemeat out of them it's sad it's the saddest thing i've ever seen in humanity and that is one of the things that we have to realize that that is our measure of a society is how do they treat the poor the hungry the the disabled the homeless you see why the church had to be shut down, guys? You see why now churches are all about their... It's it's sad. I can't even talk about it without just choking up. And, um... Because it's not right. So you can see what I'm talking about here with this beast. And, uh... That beast <clears throat> is against Israel. The nation Israel. They want Jerusalem. They want it. Okay. And, uh... <clears throat> they're going to get their hands on it. They are. And, uh... Because they're going to set up Babylon, everybody. And so... We just had a president that, left, that was, you know, finished his term. And you know he hated them. So... He did not make any bones about it. It was quite obvious he hates them. And, uh, he wants Jerusalem divided. And, uh, I told you, he is not the Antichrist. As far as what people call the Antichrist in the end times. He's not the second beast. But he's something. He's something and don't disregard him. And, uh, 
he's working hard for his agenda. And uh, it's getting to me to really a parent who's who as uh, those children. And like I told you, look at look at the last politicians. They can't help but flaunt that they're all interrelated by, oh, you know, we're fifth cousins, we're fourth cousins, and then, you know, Obama and Bush. They can't help it. They got to tout their little pride of who they really are. <clears throat> God lets it happen that way, everybody. So, the one world system is against the nation of Israel because they want Jerusalem. They want, they want that, they do not want that to be the capital. Okay. <clears throat> so, Obama left, knowing, we knew, there's no bones about it, you know, he was not a friend to them, and, um, so it's obvious who the bait, who the beast hates really bad. Now, he also, the beast also hates Christians. You cannot, uh, cut that part out either, and you gotta remember who spiritual Israel is, alright? They hate her, they hate her, and, um, they want to deceive her and cause her to burn. Okay, and uh, now we have the opposite scenario, correct? We have Donald Trump, um, all friendly with Israel, and uh, he's saying, no, Jerusalem cannot be divided up, but then is he going to help them build the third temple? Hmm. Mm, because, see, they're deceived, too. Those that are not in the body of Christ, they don't know. They're, they're just blind. And uh, they, they may not be anything but beguiled. All right? And, um, but they, you know, the ones that are the true uh, historical tribe of Judah, they are going to be shown the hand of God. They're going to see the error of their way. But uh, those that are not, that are lying and just working for the beast uh, to destroy any of God's people. Um, you know, they have to fall on their face with Christ, not accepting him. And then there's those that are in Christ that are like these ones that come to the channel and others that are out there and spouting, you know, these whole new doctrines and telling you that Revelations is not a true book and that Satan, you know, John was a... Oh, I don't even, I'm not even repeating it. I'm just not. It's just disgusting. And, um, you got to realize this beast is, is very subtle. It, it is doing things. Um, okay, so it's very confusing because then you see Donald Trump being their friend and everything. Well, uh, you know, Satan knows how to play both sides, everybody, and to deceive. And here's the thing. Here's how it's, why it's so obvious. It's what I was saying yesterday. It's so obvious because here's Donald Trump, um, and, and the Christians are just all over this. And they're looking to this man, a human flesh man, to fix it. And I told you why. I told you. <laughs> How God's it God's separating. He's looking at who's who. What's what they're what I mean, anybody can start to get pulled off and that's why we seek him, everyone, so that our alarm bell goes off and he says, No, 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 put on the brakes. What are you thinking? Clear your mind. Because it is be that whole tribe, that whole um, election was bewitching. And uh, you just don't know who's who, anybody. You just don't. Especially in the media, the alternative media. Um, you know, you got Alex Jones who was the only one out there kind of telling you what was going on, but the man is uh, nuts, so I'm sorry. He's not stable. He claims to be a Christian, you know, and he did put out that movie after the tribulation. I was like having hope for the guy um, to show people that they're not going anywhere as a rapture 
you know, like, like what's been taught. And, um, you know, as far as a pre-tribulation rapture, I don't care if you want to call the return of Christ when he gathers his elect, you know, before he throws down the, the, the plague, the final cup of wrath. If that, you want to call that a rapture, I don't care. I, I'm not offended by the word rapture. Many are. I'm not. You can call that whatever. It's a gathering of his elect, and um, it will be as it is written. I don't care what language you want to use. It's all timing. It's timing. It's not a word. It's a timing thing. So, um, it's just getting really deep out there, you guys. And don't, don't forget what Revelation 12 said. You know? The, the dragon casts out a flood after the woman. A flood of lies. And he's, you know, I'm sorry, but we are having some flooding problems. Go look at the Southern Hemisphere. Look at what's happened in the United States and all around the world right now. Because France, I think, is having, or Spain, or somewhere over there, is having some kind of serious floods. And, you know, flooding is going to be a part of it, but it's not what's going to destroy the earth. Because God's going to be, he's a consuming fire, and he's coming back to fire. You know, the fire burns away the, the rudiments, the, the impurities, and that's why he puts us in the fire. And he's coming to be a consuming fire. He's going to shake the earth. He's going to turn it upside down. And he is going to burn all that is not of him. So, let's get back to this counting. Okay? Because it is everything to do with this, everybody. You have to realize it's the pebbles, the smooth stones. Well, don't discount you know, there's a negative and a positive. Well, um, David picked up five smooth stones and slew the giant with one. Now there's four left, okay? There's four left. And, uh, there are four of these end times, and they, uh, do I believe that there's going to be actual giants walking around and eating people and everything? Like Genesis? No. I don't. I do believe the, their demonic souls do and are doing it already. I mean, I'm not going to go into graphic detail here, but you, you know, for quite some time, if you had your finger on the news of what was going on with people, and it started quite some time ago that people started doing things, and they said they were on bath salts and things like that. But, um, listen, there's been a lot of uh, beheadings uh, in intimate family members between mother and son, and that's something I've noticed uh, it's happened. A, it's been, I think I read about a new case of it every week, a son doing that. To their mother and uh, just like out of some kind of horror movie that's what we're going to be dealing with we already are now do I think giants are going to rise up out of, the, out of the ground no it's demonics they that's why they're cloning that's why they're doing chimeras and that's they don't want a soul that could resist them because the power of Christ <laughs> can take that down and destroy it, okay? But, because, you know, God gives it over to free will, but, you know, we are supposed to be the intercessors, everybody. Just like Jesus went to the guy in the tombs, um, the head legion, you know, he, we have that authority, but we have to be grounded in him, and we have to understand where that authority comes from, we have to understand our faith, we have to have on our armor, we have to understand what kind of battle we're engaging in, and we cannot let our flesh into it. Because if our flesh gets into it, we can't battle them with our flesh. It's only by the Spirit of the Holy Spirit of Christ. 
So they don't want them in a body that could have free will or that, you know, a fellow servant of Christ um, can come together and kick this thing out. Okay, they want it into a body that is swept, completely swept, has no spirit, is a hollow vessel to put these demonics in. Now that's what they're doing. <laughs> and they're controlled by artificial intelligence, which is what they're going to do with, with technology for those that are not in the Book of Life that are here and take the Mark of the Beast. If you're in the Book of Life, you're not going to take the Mark of the Beast because God is going to put his seal on you if you're here. And I truly believe those souls that are in danger and are his, he's going to bring them home first. And he knows exactly who's going to do what and who's not going to do what. And that is his business. We just have to be doing what we're supposed to be doing. We cannot be all consumed about what's our place. Where are we going to end up? Da, 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 da. Because I'm telling you, that's eyes on yourself. And then you've got your eyes off your Savior. And the disciples did this and he had to deal with them. About the greatest in kingdom of heaven. Okay, I'm just saying. If you do the work and you are the servant and you're doing what the Holy Spirit leads you to do, that's all that's going to be asked of you, expected of you, and he already knows where to place you. Because you've already given over your free will to his will the best that you're processing it out. It's a walk. It's a walk. And, um, much is hidden that will be revealed, everybody. I mean, that's what revelation means. The revealing. So. It's a smooth, worn stone by handling. Okay. And, uh. It's exactly it. A stone. And this is in the Greek here. See if I can pull it up in the other verses that are totally in the Bible. Because this is just the Greek. Let's see, let me get back to where I was. So, you can see how this election, and so was the one with Obama. Uh, and what's going on in the United Nations. They cast their votes too, okay? So you can see how this applies for today. And uh, that counting has been going on for a long time. And the people get worn down. Worn down. See, that's how the devil gets us in. When we're worn down, when he keeps afflicting and afflicting and afflicting, and if we don't incur learn to encourage ourselves in the Lord, you can't, you know, it's great when you have an awesome brother or sister of Christ that will roll up their sleeves and just fight with you but honey those are few and far between you will find that the majority of them will leave you when you need them the most I'm just saying that's been my experience and um, look at what's happened to our nation just families ripped apart well it's like that in the body of Christ too it's a spiritual physical sign of something spiritual going on. So count. Let's see. The smooth stones. Let me see where else that says that. I know it's in uh, you know, David and Goliath and smooth stones. Because sometimes it's in the Hebrew and it's not just says smooth stones. It, it actually, I know, I used to write this stuff down. Okay, where I'm finding it in the Old Testament is 1 Samuel 17, 40. And this is David, um, you know, doing his thing. <laughs> what, a, what a warrior he is and was. Um, I'm sure he's up there really doing something special for God. And, you know, it wasn't that David was perfect. He was far from it. He had a lust problem. Um, it carried on to the generation. That's what caused Solomon to fall. There was something in his lineage that just, you know, 
caused a lot of problems <clears throat> in that department. And uh, it caused him to fall. But here's where God had grace for him in his eyes, even before Christ was on the cross. Um, because he encouraged himself in the Lord, he repented. And that is where the Lord used it in my spirit that when I am under attack or I am broken, even if my flesh does not want to even stop crying long enough to open up my eyes and go read the word, I there's something appalling in me that makes me do it, that I make myself do it. Now, it's a fight, you know. It's a fight. It's a spiritual fight. And I know I've even been encouraged by others, um, well-meaning brethren, and I would be going through something and they're like, you know, maybe you should just take a break. What? That just, that just stirred my soul even more. Because I couldn't imagine getting through a day without encouragement of the Lord, of the word of the Lord. I really can't. I can't. I don't skip a day. If, if, even if, if I'm, you know, sometimes I get a really bad migraine. It's hard for me to read. And, um, cause it affects my vision and, and it just makes me, you know, I end up getting sick to my stomach and I will turn on the audio Bible and meditate on it. <laughs> But I'll force myself when I am distraught and broken. I will force myself. Because it seems like that's the last thing you want to do. Let's go open up the Bible. You just want to curl up in a ball, right? I mean, I think we've all been there at some point in time. But I won't stop. I won't. Uh, that is, that is, because I'll tell you, I read it. Psalms, especially when I'm in that kind of condition of a hurting, injured, oh wow, the words of David are just so uplifting to hear him encouraging himself in the Lord and, and his spirit through the Holy Spirit, you know, which he had and he wrote this and um, it just goes into my soul and uh, I could just so relate. To so many things that David went through. And David wasn't perfect. We all know that. But God loved his heart for him. The heart he had for him. Doesn't make him perfect. He wasn't. Christ is perfect. Okay. So the first time I see this. Uh, smooth stones. Is in the book of 1 Samuel 17, 40, talking about David, that he took his staff in his hand, he chose him five smooth stones. You know, they given him all this equipment, right? All this armor and everything. And uh, he just was a tot. You know, he was a kid. And he couldn't fit in this stuff. And so he just was like, <laughs> just give me what um, I know. And that's my slingshot, right? And uh, why did it work? Why did it work? Because he empowered and lifted up the name of God. Yeah. And came in his strength, might, and power. And that is how you take down a giant, everybody. And our giants are different things. <laughs> so are our mountains. You know, the book tells us what to expect. And it's going to be bad enough. Do we need to make things worse? And just to sell a book? And um, just steer clear of it, everybody. I know. It's hurtful. It's hurtful when you have uh, liked a minister or a pastor. And you think they're bringing a lot of people to Christ. But, you know, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. I mean, that's why, you know, when you start to share your platform with others and you just start inviting people in to get viewers and all, to increase your numbers, all right? And if you're over that platform, that's that was your platform, God gave it to you, and you start putting 
all these different ones on here that are not standing on the true uh, gospel. The way it was written and the way we are to stay, I mean, we're getting to a time where the gate is getting narrower and narrower. Okay? This is why the gate gets narrower and narrower. It's to keep you from going off the beaten path and joining off into these doctrines of devils from your brethren that say they're there giving you the gospel. I'm, I'm just saying, guys. Uh, look. It's come to that. It's come to that. And it's hurtful. And um, then, you know, the ones that are working hard and telling the truth and um, sticking and standing on the Word of God, and uh, they're, they're just getting kicked in the teeth. But that's okay. Because, you know, I told you, Christ isn't coming for a beat-up bride. He restores you. Let someone slap you. Let them kick you. Every time you get called a name, rejected, cussed out, or anything for the gospel, you count it all joy. And that gives you a smile on your face. <laughs> it's not that you're glad they came. It's just that you know it has no effect. They can sit there and curse you to the devil. Well, <laughs> they're the ones... In bed with Belial. I'm just saying. It isn't going to hurt you. They can't hex you. They can't curse you. You're walking with the Most High God. And Christ. You're on his rock. He's not going to. Those are little ants at a picnic to him. He just flicks, flicks them. You know, it's like I told you. You don't not plan a picnic because there could be a fly and an ant there. It's expected. It's expected. You got good food. <laughs> you know? You got good food and there they come. To ruin it. You know? A fly in the ointment. So to speak. Whatever. Okay. So anyway, he drew the slingshot. And remember, he only used one of those five. And why five? Five's grace, guys. Okay? Then it's a mention. Smooth stones are mentioned in Isaiah 57. Six. Okay? And... Let's look at Isaiah. I haven't read that one in a while. Okay, so we're going to do this in several different places of resources that I have for this verse. Um, he's basically talking about the falling away, the evil. This is everything to do with the harlot um, and her bed defiled. And... Um, it's a continuation of Isaiah 56 and he's talking about um, the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the whore. It's clearly talking about the apostate that goes against God, goes against his word and ends up falling into bed with the devil and um talks about inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree, slaying the children in the valleys of under the cliffs of the rocks. Well, we know who's going to be going under the cliffs and the rocks to hide. And they are those that are ruling the beast now. Say it's... Um, verse 6. Among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. They... They are thy lot. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering. Thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in these? See, when you put the word smooth stones and the word lot together, that is what makes the Greek word stigma. And that should this should be an extreme warning to us because it has everything to do with the mark of the beast. And it is tied to 666. Okay, but in the Greek, it's not the word stigma. It's the stones are the number for the man, everyone. And the man is Satan, that second beast. Okay? And believe me, when you know who Satan is, you're going to know who his children, his, his people doing his works. 
and he is their father. And they are doing overtime to bring him in. Okay? They really are. Listen. The kings of the earth, the ones that are in power, they're just puppets. Your appointed leaders are puppets. There are people that are over that. And they're the ones calling the shots, like the Wizard of Oz, everybody. They are children of Belial. Truly children of Belial. So, this smooth stones. Listen, David didn't use but one stone. There's four left. Okay? And this is completely tied to the number 666. The stones are the number for the man, the second beast. And that man is definitely Satan. And when you know Satan, you're going to know his children. You're going to know what they do, what their, what their uh, agenda is. And that is, they're going to bring in their father. They lead the harlot to their de to her demise. They know they're going to burn her with fire. Okay? They hate her. They absolutely hate her. So, remember, Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for the number it is the number of a man and his number is 600 three score and six it's got everything to do with this and it's got everything to do with the four carpenters of Zechariah 1 there are four carpenters there are four dynasties that make up the beast the first beast what are those four powers they are religion Financial, educational, such as science and technology, and financial. And that beast is now moving towards, it's got all those things put together. And it's now really moving fast with science, technology, and it has brainwashed people in higher education to be ungodly. And, uh... Listen, it's got everything to do with it. I, I can't, this, the, the four carpenters are artificers, everybody, and they are the masons and the smiths that build. And uh, this is where I was really kind of shocked because... I didn't dig deep enough to understand that God would use their own. But when I went back to the children of Cain, what they did, they were builders, they were artificers, they were masons, smiths, iron, brass, the whole nine yards there. And that's the same as the carpenters. And um, the same job. Same brand. Same industry. The king of Tyre. It's trafficking, merchandising. It's got everything to do with the harlot. Now, we just said, the beast, she rides the beast, but the beast hates her. Okay. And God says, come out of her, my people. Okay. Well, you know, let's just use the United States for an example. Most families are getting some kind of governmental support. Now, whether that's Social Security or whatever. And listen, I don't call those entitlements. A lot of those are not entitlements. When it comes to the VA, when it comes to Social Security, 
listen, people paid into that all their life in Social Security. And it's just like collecting on an insurance policy. But, but the government would have us think that that's an entitlement. But they would be in prison if they were a corporation and did with the shareholders what they've done with Social Security. It's a, it's a way to get the people to, to lash out at one another because they're claiming their insurance. It's what it is. It's insurance. All right? You pay life insurance. Say you took out a $500,000 policy for life insurance. You didn't pay $500,000 for that policy. But if your loved one passes away, you collect the $500,000. It's the same kind of thing, everybody. And with our military, our veterans, they served. And many have paid a high price. And we should be taking care of our, vet, our vets. So, they hate her. This is money they want to waste on themselves to build their underground bunkers and their food and all their little niceties, you know? Believe me, I don't know if you've seen any of these underground bunkers, but they're sure nicer than most of the houses you and I live in and the amenities. He hates her, but she rides the beast. Okay? And this is why God's people have to come out of her. Because at the time, and it comes becomes to where they are going to make you uh, turn this into a religious thing and to change the brains and the DNA through technology and uh, everything like that. I mean, you guys don't understand a lot about... The scientific part, uh, it, most laymans don't, and you don't understand how microwaves and uh, these things that are going through our body right now with internet, Wi-Fi, it does affect your DNA, everybody. It does. But when you have the seal of living God, God will use what was meant for evil to your good. You have to stand on that. You have to. Okay? So, it's been a long time. This beast has been going on for a long time. And it's worldwide, everybody. And people, most places that are like Europe and the United States and, you know, the biggest parts of the, the world, they do have elections. They do elect their officials. And um, we are casting these ballots. And it is wearing us down. And so people are screaming out to go against it. Okay? But, uh, guess what? You know, they just know, they just learned how to appease you and make you think that they're working, that you've got a, somebody working for you. <laughs> it's the truth. So, Just remember what God says. He says, For I am jealous over you. This is 2 Corinthians 11, 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealous, jealousy. I have, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. We have to come out of this. So, we are knowing that it's coming. We should be knowing what to expect. And we should not be at all worried about what's going to happen with our tangible things in this life. The attachments to them are, need to be broken because there's you do not want to be Lot's wife and look back. Although I do truly believe she was looking back for her children that, were, that did not leave. I don't think she was in love with Sodom. Uh, I really don't. But still, it's the same... 
principle. Mm -hmm. Because we have to be a chaste virgin to Christ. We cannot be in bed with Satan. And the harlot rides that beast, although the beast hates her. You can't forget that part. All right? And, um, so this verse has everything to do with that. Okay? Because we are coming upon the time that we just cannot be in the system. And a time is approaching. God is preparing us. He is moving us. And this is what ends up happening. And uh, Israel, uh, historic Israel, you know, every time got led off astray to strange gods and um, got in bed with Baal and all the gods of Egypt. And I'm we have to realize we're being given these things as an example to learn from and believe me Cain has his fingers in every one of these false religions and the Sumerians the Egyptians it goes way back and they try to make you think that their documentation and all this other stuff is all long before the word of God. And um, they lie, 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 lie. So, remember, you're either going to be in bed with the devil or you're going to be in the care of your father, one way or the other, whether you've passed away or whether you are here to stand. And um, you have to realize when it talks about, because in verse 7 it says, Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed, even thither winnest thou up to offer sacrifice. This is, this is talking about going up to the high places, everybody. This is Baal. This is Bama. Alright? And it says, Behind the doors also in the post hast thou set up thy remembrance, for thou hast discovered thyself to another than me, and art gone up. Thou hast enlarged thy bed and made thee a covenant with them. Thou lovest their bed where thou sawest it. Well, you know, talk about the bed defiled. Remember that? And, um, this isn't talking about your resting place. It's talking about something quite uh, religious and spiritual. And um, we are to have Christ's blood over us and washed in it and washed our robes and get the spots out. And um, we are to have him circumcised, our hearts circumcised to him, rend our hearts to him, and uh, that lamb's blood protects you from the death angel, everybody, and that is Satan, and he has to pass over us, and if anything other than the blood of Christ is not, this is why they did it on their doors and their posts, okay, if you don't have that, you are defiled. And the Hebrew word for bed is couch. And um, there's more going on there than what we realize. And um, because this is what he's talking about to Jezebel in the churches. All right. He talks about what he's going to do to her and her children. And, um, We just cannot be in part of this, okay? You've enlarged your bed. 
you're serving Satan. You've been taken in and bedded by him. Um, he is a corrupter, everybody. He is he is a desolator. He is the destroyer. He is the dragon. Um, you know, he is not a good thing, everyone. I mean, he's evil. He's this is why frogs, snakes are all in there because it is of him. It is evil. It is spiritually dead to God. It is the representation of evil. Okay? And uh, it's the opposite of a blessing. It's a curse. It is blackness. This is why he's talking about the black robes of the priests at that time that are in the in Babylon. It's just, it's horrible, everybody. We just cannot be a part of this. And so, you know, he's going to come out of the sea, which is the people, everyone. He's going to appear that way. Now, as the dragon, he had no physical life. Um, he's in darkness. And uh, he's in moral darkness. He's in spiritual darkness. He's in the king over the abyss of the pit. Um, he is sin, everyone. And um, it's not a place we can go. And uh, there may be well-meaning pastors who think it's all wonderful to support the third temple I would think they would know better. I really would. And it makes me question what in the heck is going on. And, uh, really does, everybody. So, those smooth stones, that's what that's talking about. So, we know now that you count the number of the beast, it's a smooth stone worn down. The people get worn down. Well, this beast has really been gathering some power. This beast is going to get a deadly wound, everybody. And um, their savior is going to come save it. All right. So we just covered the word count. And then, of course, number is arithmos, where we get our word arithmetic of the beast. The word is therion. Now, it is a dangerous animal, a venomous wild beast. Remember, the, the serpent is a fabulous, fascinating animal. And... Um, This wild animal, wild beast, brutal, bestial man, savage, it's ferocious, and uh, it is not something that we want to be tied to at all, whatsoever. So we're going to look closer at this word, the beast, and you might be surprised if you didn't realize this, but this animal listen, it's a representation of kingdoms and Satan is over the kingdom and uh, if you think about something that I'm going to bring to mind we know that the fourth beast which is the beast of the end times, is the fourth kingdom, as it states in Daniel 7, verse 23, and it's evil, and it's evil is symbolized by two characteristics, and that's that it's, one, it's an unclean animal, and it's an animal that travels between the regions, uh, which is what 
amphibians do, like creatures such as frogs, as an example. And uh, here's you and I, we're, we're uh, confined to where we live, right? Uh, one location. In other words, we're like in quarantine, okay? But this unclean freak animal, and it is a freak, okay? It's like a genetic mutation. That should give us a warning right there. Because he is the defiler of creation. He will just defile everything and um, it's an unclean animal it goes from one region to another and it's like a virus everyone it contaminates and <clears throat> when Satan walked this earth and when he falls from Michael booting him out he's going to once again, contaminate the earth. He contaminated it when he walked it before. And he's going to contaminate it again. He is a walking virus. He truly is. He's a lot like a virus. So you can see that virus is an illness. It's a disease. It's a truly in the like form of him. Now, let's uh, look at Keeping in mind, there are two beasts, right? What would you think if I pointed out to you that Christ done, uh, had already dealt with all this in the wilderness? Yes, he did, everybody. He sure did. Who was in the wilderness with Christ when he was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights? Well, it's in Mark chapter 1 and... Uh, we're going to go there, <clears throat> and in verse 13, now remember, what does 13 mean? It means apostasy, depravity, rebellion, and it says, and uh, it's talking about Christ, it says, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, who is going to be that second beast, everyone, and was with the wild beasts. Ah. And the angels ministered unto him. Okay? So Christ was dealing with that. Now, you and I could not go into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and have nothing to eat or drink and live through that. He did it for us, everyone. He's already conquered this. It's your proof right here. And uh, that was just a small covering of it, of the 40 days and 40 nights. But that's how it's covered in the book of Mark. But it definitely says Satan was there. We know that. And was with the wild beast. But the angels administered unto him. Now, we know, again, there are two beasts. All right? And uh, that Mark, chapter 1, verse 13, is the only place that it talks about the wild beast being there. <clears throat> In that word. Okay. And um, we see it again in Acts when in verse 12 and um, Peter went up to pray on the housetop. And he came very hungry, but he fell into a trance, okay? He would have went and eaten, but he fell into a trance. What is this word, trance? Okay, God was dealing with him. And uh, it's ecstasis, all right? 
And it means a displacement of the mind, a bewilderment, or an ecstasy. To be amazed, amazement, astonishment, a trance. Okay. Casting down of a thing from its proper place or state. Throwing of the mind out of its normal state. An alienation of mind. Whether such as makes a lunatic or that man by whom some sudden emotion is transported as if it were out of himself, so that in this rapt condition, although he is awake, his mind is so drawn off from all surrounding objects and wholly fixed on things divine that he sees nothing but the forms and images lying within and thinks that he perceives with his bodily eyes and ears reality shown to him by God. Okay? You know, if... Uh, the mental health system was set up like it is now. If it was that way back then, you know, all of these uh, people that God touched <laughs> would be in the mental ward, especially Moses. And then that, he would have been diagnosed with schizophrenia. Okay? See, I did a lot of digging about mental illness, and um, <clears throat> it's clearly a spiritual situation, everyone. And uh, so he went into this trance. God was showing him something. And the root of the word is G1839. And uh, it's where we get our word uh, existemi, which I told you before was bewitched. Um, but this insane, amazed, bewitched, wondered, and... Uh, It can mean it's not the same word that is used in the word bewitched when Paul was speaking to the congregation that had went back into the law. But this is more talking about amazed and uh, like people seeing something Christ did and a miracle and just being amazed and uh, that's what this is talking about so Peter went into this trance God took his attention uh, and got his attention and put him in this state of mind and he saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, and it said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, No, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not common and it happened three times and then the vessel went back up into heaven everybody now Peter didn't quite understand this vision and I imagine I've never had an experience like that with God um, <laughs> but there's times where he's speaking to me and it, I'm confused I'm like what does that mean and uh, what is this? Or something like that. What are you showing me? And um, I've never had an experience like this, though. And like Peter had, of course. And um, he was basically telling them. Because Peter was struggling with teaching to the Gentiles. And going to the Gentiles. He was. And uh, God was telling him, do not call something common or unclean that I've cleansed and uh, he was talking about the Gentiles because Christ died for all okay so he's saying you know look I'm over all these things the beasts of the earth the wild beast it's the wild beast that we're talking about here for the beast everybody and uh Christ has got it covered for us. Alright? And, um, 
We're going to go back to Revelation 13. And look at this. It is a venomous wild beast. Well, the serpent is venomous also, everybody. And his sting and his bite and his venom is horrible. And, uh, He will be a man. He will not be, he will be supernatural. And uh, we have to be able to recognize this. And let's go back up to verse 1. I wanted to cover that right away, but I want to bring something to your attention about this beast. Now, the first beast is the world governments and uh, those that stand behind the scenes that don't have their name associated with the political party or, you know, they're not ever out there campaigning. But they're running the show, everybody. And uh, I do believe that in our nation we've been shown when someone really starts to go against what they're told to do, they get rid of them. And um, that is I, what I believe happened to Kennedy. And uh, I believe it was, that's what they'd like to happen again. Um, because they will eat their own. They are not of their own power. We think that a president can just fix anything, do anything, and really, he's, his strings are pulled and by another entity. And if he goes outside the lines, um, that's why they try to get people that are of an interrelated family, no matter how distant, because they will be, they've been proven to be loyal to the beast, everybody. So, can't have somebody going rogue, right? I mean... But we need to cover this one more time. And I apologize that it's taking so long, but it's important. Uh, Revelation 13, 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having, now remember, the sea is representative of the peoples, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So, what are these crowns? And um, now this is the first beast. Okay, this is this is the beast that is with us today. Whether you see it or not, um, it is there. And we need to talk about these crowns. Uh, it has seven heads, which encompasses the entire world with its seven continents. Um, seven is representation of the perfection of God. It is resurrection, spiritual completeness, Father's perfection. So it will fall into one of those categories. Well, you know, the beast would not exist if God did not allow it to, everybody. He is on the throne. He's just letting Satan play out his part to do the, the cleaning up and uh, getting everything set right for him to bring his kingdom to this earth, everybody. So, a crown is also a diadem. Um, and we think of the crowns of life, um, which Jesus says that blessed is the man that endures temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him and that's James 1 verse 12 and um, so these are crowns well royalty right isn't that what it means but it's it's the crown of Satan's kingship that he is given because remember when Christ was in the wilderness, 
he said, these are my kingdoms to, to Christ. And said, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all. You know, you, first of all, he had no chance to deceive Christ or get Christ to be in a situation where he was so broken that um, he was going to give in to that because, you know, God is on the throne and God is in control and all things are set in the order of God and God sets up kings and removes them and uh, you know Satan can only go so far and he will not come off that leash he can't <laughs> but he is you know misery loves company and he wants to take as many souls to hell with him as he possibly can. So, it's his royalty. Well, you know, that harlot's going to think she's royal riding that beast. She is. She's going to think she's royalty. And, um, so it has seven heads. It has ten horns. Horns are power. And upon his, hen, his horns, ten crowns. Okay? So, they're kingdoms. Alright? And he is... He's got his own little kingdom and uh, royalty. And upon the head, his head's the name of blasphemy. Everything to do with him is blasphemous, everybody. And um, he is a divider. He is a destroyer. And, you know, that's what the spirit of Python is. It's the spirit of divination. And uh, that's what he's doing to the church. And it, God's just using it so he can purge it. But, verse 2 says, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and his great authority. So you can see that the dragon is all in this. It gives him his seat, his power, and authority. So even though Satan is not the beast at this time, um, he is giving it its power and authority. Okay? And looking for my note that I made. Which I don't know what I did with it. Hmm. Well. Darn. I had a note talking about the animals. Let me see. See Animals, animals, okay. The great beasts are four kings of Daniel 7. We covered that. All right. So, let's look at these animals. Now, there is a duality in God's word. And, um, you know that Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And, um, there's also a refer reference to the lion, which is Satan, the Lord, the roaring lion of the earth. Jesus is the lion of Judah, the King of Kings, because it's the King Lion of David. Now, the goats are the sinful people and we have the scapegoat which is Satan okay and this was when it's only in Leviticus it talks about the scapegoat which is also a zazel which is tied to the bottomless pit also and uh, the sins went out onto that scapegoat all right and he was released into the wilderness. Yeah. With the wild beast. Yeah. Okay. So, the serpent, well, that's Satan's role on the earth and as the deceiver. But when Satan is Azazel, the scapegoat, this is when he's out in the wilderness, everybody. And the dragon is Satan. And this is how he has his dominion over the heaven and the sea. Okay, and you got to remember the sea is the peoples also. Then you have frogs, 
all right, which are his unclean spirits that go into the evil leaders, such as the prophet, the false prophet, and this is covering the earth and the sea, okay? So he's got his roles, and um, these wild beasts are unclean animals, and they are representations of the nations of the world. And you got to realize Satan has a kingdom. So, you know, he's in his spot. And in the heavenly places, he's not. His kingdom is. Well, remember before Christ went to the cross, uh, Gabriel had to really get through to Daniel because God heard Daniel's prayers and Gabriel had to come down through Satan's kingdom to get to the earth and uh, the prince of Persia withstood him and uh, he had to call for Michael, okay, who's the prince of Israel, but heavenly prince of Israel. It's just something to think about, everybody, because, you know, everything is set up in a way that is orderly, even Satan's kingdom, okay? It is. And um, he's got it all nice and neatly knit up, but only under the power that he's allowed to have it, okay? So this, this beast is telling you, this is the fourth beast of Daniel, it's likened to a leopard and um, the feet of a bear, and these represent certain nations, everyone. And the mouth of the lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, as it were wounded to death. Okay, one of the seven heads is wounded to death. Now let's look at this word, heads, which is G2776, and it's talking about the sense of seizing the head as the mo part most readily taken a hold of, literatively or figuratively, the head. And this is why he takes the heads of nations, okay, and controls them. He does. And uh, you've got to remember, loss of the head is, is destroying life. And uh, it's used in capital punishment, <clears throat> beheadings, and extreme punishments, and you see why he would want to behead Christians, you see, and um, how his kingdom works, and uh, let's see, it's anything supreme, chief, prominent of persons, a master or lord, a husband in relation to his wife. Well, you know, he hates the harlot, but he's going to get her right in bed, okay? And um, Christ should be the Lord of your hus husband. He should be the Lord over us all, but he is the Lord, he is the husband of his church, everyone. He is. Please don't ever let anyone, anyone ever tell you that Christ is not your husband that you're waiting on and you are to be his bride, okay? He is the cornerstone, everybody. And he can be a stumbling block, okay? And um, our heads hold our minds, our brains, and they are directly connected to our hearts, okay? So you have to realize Why? Now this head getting wounded, and the word is for wounded is svazo. It's G4969, and it means to butcher, especially an animal for food or in sacrifice, or generally to slaughter, or specific, especially to maim, violently kill, slay, wound. Well, you know, this first beast has to have the deadly wound. For them to bring their father in. They know this. They know this. Okay. 
This is where Satan eats his own, everyone. He's not a loyal father, like our father. He is um, cruel, vindictive. He'll sell anyone out for what he wants and uh, for his power, his moment of glory. He'd sell anything or anybody else. He has, just like in Greek mythology, you know, Satan, Saturn, the planet Saturn, ate his own children. Okay, Greek mythology is a copycat of the story of God, and um, only instead of it being God, their God is Satan, okay? And uh, Saturn ate his own children, and he sure does, and that's why he gets humans to sacrifice their children. Sure does. And um, the beast is bloody. It has to have blood, and it likes innocent blood. And um, that's why it is the what goes on spiritually, what the spiritual <clears throat> deep meaning of abortion is, and and, um, you know, I, I, I've prayed and prayed that abortion is stopped and it's horrible. And, um, I, I got a revealing and I didn't like it. And, you know, it was like, okay, the beast is doing this. It gets people to do this. It deceives them makes them, most women that do that are going through something and uh, they think they can't make it or it's going to hinder them or they're going to struggle even more or whatever. I mean, could be a woman with four children and her husband leaves her and she doesn't make enough money to make it on her own and he finds out there's another one on the way and he leaves or Whatever, you know, there's all kinds of scenarios. We can't judge other people what they're going through because there was one thing I've learned in life that God has given me insight to. And we can watch someone else's situation and we can see what they're doing or not doing. And we sit there having never, ever been in that person's shoes and stand there and say, well, I would do this or I would do that. And you don't know that. You don't know what you would do. You think you know what you would do. And um, God did reveal that to me. And, and so when I was praying about the abortions and, and that, you know, God was just kind of revealing to me that Satan is just so evil that he's going to get that innocent blood one way or the other. And uh, he's not going to stop until he is stopped. And uh, people will help it along. Ignorant people, lost people, hurting people, or evil people who are the heads of this kind of stuff. They know exactly what they're doing. And, um, you know, look at the guy that exposed Planned Parenthood that were buy selling the baby parts and how evil these women's hearts are. And most of them were women. Huh? And, um, uh, it's just, it's just dollar signs in these ladies' eyes. It's mostly women. And um, all about the almighty dollar. And uh, he exposed it, how horrible it was. And, you know, I am a clinical person. So, yes, I can have a discussion about something at the dinner table with my colleagues or something like that that might turn someone else's stomach. But talking about aborted fetuses the way they did at a dinner table, drinking wine, it was just, oh, evil. You know, my colleagues and I used to have to sit and eat lunch and or talk over lunch and have our meetings and talk over our patients. I mean, that's what you do. And um, you might be talking about excrement and... drains, <laughs> draining some really nasty stuff, or you might be talking about an infection, 
in the weirdest places. I, I mean, you don't have the same uh, gross out factor. But that was evil. I mean, I, I'm talking from a clinical professional's standpoint. It was disgusting. It was horrible. And God just showed me, look, these people are not going to stop. The beast is hungry for blood. And um, it loves the blood of innocence. It thrives on it. And look, you don't need science fiction. You don't need these movies because the truth of the reality of how these people are and the things these people do is worse than that. It really is, everybody. So, this head of the beast is going to get wounded. And it is going to be like an execution. Okay? And it's not going to be some man that gets shot in the head and is resurrected. Alright? <clears throat> now, <clears throat> let me tell you something about Satan. He knows how to deceive. And he knows what he what lies he's fed. Okay? He knows what the majority of evangelicals believe. And he knows what they're expecting. Just like the rapture. Okay, I would not have a doubt in my mind he would fake some kind of alien invasion rapture thing. I don't doubt that. I expect anything that is in the realm that he could do. And God says he's going to be doing some really fascinating supernatural things that if it you know if it were possible to deceive God's elect that are on the earth at that time so it would nothing would shock me and um, I wouldn't doubt it if you know he does do something like that just to throw everybody off I who knows you know the guy is just <laughs> mm. so it's wounded to death and uh, it's the same as deadly. And his deadly wound was healed. So this death is thanatos. Alright? It's the death of a body. It is um, death. Literatively, figuratively, deadly. To, you know, to be death. And in the, septu or in the uh, lexicon, it's talking about the death of the body, the separation. So, you know whether natural or violent, of the soul from the body by which life on earth is ended. Okay, um, we know that John the Baptist was beheaded, and something's going to happen to one of these uh, heads of this beast. Now, we know the beast's heads, there's seven of them, so they cover the continent. So, one continent is going to pull out or do something. something it's going to be a war. I'm sure, and um, it's it's something of darkness. All right, it's it's something very equivalent to the region of the thickest darkness. It's something that's going to be enveloped in darkness and sin, evil. Um, we do not fear death. We really should not. Because we are Christ's, we are God's, and um, we are promised eternal life. And uh, believe me, this life ain't so great in the flesh. But we have a job to do. And um, this is a deadly wound, and it is a death stroke. That's what it's talking about. And it's talking about to experience death, a death stroke. And it is going to get a death stroke. More than likely by war, some kind of a, you know, somebody not going along with the plan and just pulling them out. And, and it's going to cause everything to turn upside down with the world government. Okay? And it uh, could even be natural, too. There should, it could be, I think it's going to be a lot of things. It's going to be cataclysms, um, natural disaster. It's going to be 
political war. Um, really. Because we know at that time, all hell is breaking loose, everybody. And uh, you, you know, as well as I do, it's a fact about Fukushima and what it's doing to the Pacific Ocean and the effects it's having on the Earth. And um, they're going to coincide. They've got a plan, everyone. You can bet your bottom dollar they've got a plan. And they would do whatever they could to execute their plan, but see, they're not in control, and neither is the beast, and neither is the dragon. It just has power that it's evil power is what it's being given. So, you know, God is on the throne, and things are going to happen in his time. It's his timing, not our timing, not their timing. It's his timing. And so the deadly wound was healed. Okay, so... Deadly was the Natos. Wound is piège, a blow, a stripe, a wound, a public calamity of heavy affliction and plague, a stroke by implication. Stripe and wounded. Okay? Plague. It's plague A. It's like plague, where we get our word plague. So it even gets a plague. You understand? <laughs> and it means it's from the root word pleso. And it means to strike, to smite, um, through the idea of flattening out, to pound, figuratively, figuratively to inflict with a calamity, smite. Okay, so it means, um, in the lexicon, it's referring to, to, tr to strike, to smite, of the heavenly body smitten by God, that they may be deprived of light and shrouded in darkness, which is Revelation 8. 12, everybody. So it's just something to really think about. And that's the fourth angel sounding um, is what it's talking about. That's what it's referring to. And it says, and the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise. Now that's the fourth angel, the fourth trumpet everybody. And then after that happens, it says, and I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Now those are going to be the three woe trumpets. And the seventh one is the one Christ pours out. So the third trumpet is the great star that falls from heaven burning as it was a lamp upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters and that star is wormwood and a third part of the waters became worm, wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter and then the fourth angel sounds where the third part of the sun was smitten the third part of the moon well something was in the way everybody this is not the event when Christ returns and everything turns black and it's covered by his coming that's not what that is. This is this is <laughs> this is the sixth seal. Christ comes in the seventh. Okay, so something obscures this. Mhm. Mm a third and a third and a third again. Remember, a third part of the sun, a third part of the moon, a third part of the stars. Remember the third and a third and a third. Listen, it's commencing. It's commencing. That's what he's telling you. He is fulfilling all things. It's coming. So, I don't think it's a coincidence that when it talks about the smitten and the fourth angel or the fourth trumpet and the third part of the sun was smitten. Okay? This is the same word, plezo. G4141 means to strike or to smite, which is directly tied with the deadly wound. Okay? <clears throat> now, we're looking at this word, the deadly wound. We see it is tied to the fourth trumpet, correct? 
And uh, guess what? You know, Fukushima, it is affecting uh, a third part of the waters, wormwood. Okay? It is. And m many will die from this. It's radiation. And that doesn't even include the radiation that's happening from the cosmos. But this word here, talking about the deadly wound, it is plague. Um, whereas we get our word plague, and it means that just that a plague, a stripe, a wound, okay, and a calamity. But um, in the lexicon, it's even talking about it, and it's talking about a death stroke and a wound made by a sword or a sword stroke. And it um, can also mean a public calamity, heavy affliction, a plague, tormenting, now destroying bodies of men, and sent as by God as a punishment, such as in Revelation 14, 18. Okay? So, it can very well encompass a lot of things. I, I would not be surprised that everything starts pouring out at one time. I really would not. It's going to be very, very chaotic. And, um, and it says, and his deadly wound was healed. And that is the word therapeuo, where we get our word therapeutic. It's uh, G2323. And it means to do service. To heal, to cure, to wait upon, menially, to adore, to relieve of disease, cure, heal, worship. And it's from the same as 2324 in the Greek. And it's talking about um, a menial attendant as if cherishing as a servant. Okay? Well, you know, that's his baby. This beast, mm -hmm. you know, this is not spoken of in the good, good sense of God, like an attendant or a servant of God. I mean, he is doing only what God allows him to do, and I told you he is a tool in God's toolkit. So, but it's not in the good sense. Okay, this is why Satan is darkness. His uh. All his prophecies are given in moons or months, uh, and it, it's of the darkness, okay? And God's prophecies of fulfillment and promises are given in the, you know, days of light, okay? And so, and it says, in all the world, well, let's look at this world. The world is, uh, the word is, sorry, G1093, and it is pronounced as Ga, okay, and it means by solid, by a word by soil, a primary word of soil, by extension a region or the solid part of the whole of the terrain of the globe, including the occupants in each application, the country, the earth, earthly, ground, land, land world. Well, it's talking about arable land. It's talking about um, of earthly material out of which a thing is formed with the implied idea of frailty and weakness. Hmm. Yeah. Think about that. Um, where this has been used before in Scripture... You know, it's the opposite. Christ came from heaven. Okay, so it's it's like the opposite. It's this worldly. We all know who the prince of this air is and everything. And uh, it is talking about like in the land of, you know, Israel or uh, the land of, you know, some place. And um, it's also the same word when it says in Matthew 5, 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Mm-hmm. Or ye are the salt of the earth. 
until heaven and earth pass away. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Well, he fulfilled it, everybody, on that cross. Um, remember, um, Matthew 5.35 says, Nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Yeah, yeah. Um, this earth is eventually going to just be set up, have his enemy set up as his footstool. You understand? <laughs> and we are not to lay our treasures upon this earth where moth and dust corrupt and rust corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. That's right. We, we're to put our treasures in heaven. So that's what it's talking about there. And uh, Jesus said, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. And he's going to. <clears throat> he really is. He's going to pour out that final cup. So, <clears throat> the whole world wandered after the beast. Wandered. What is this word? 2296. It means to wander by implication, to admire, have it in have in admiration to marvel or to wonder and it is thumazo that's the word and it comes from the Greek word thoma and it means of wonder properly concrete by implication to abstract admiration a wonderful thing a marvel exceedingly great wonder well there's only other one place, one place this word is used in this context, and that is in Revelation 17, talking about the harlot. And it says, I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Yeah, he was like, what? Uh, he marveled at it. He was wondering about it. A great wonder. He was just like, what is this? Okay, and um, that's the only place that that word was used in that context. Um, but it's the same word as when people saw Christ um, do his miracles. Okay, he's coming to play Christ, everybody. He is, he is, he is gonna be such a fake of playing God okay and it says so here's here let's recap where we are so we have the beast that is the governmental you know one world system and it come up out of the sea and it was like the description of the fourth beast of Daniel and it clearly says the dragon gives him his power and his seat and his great authority. Because, see, Satan, the dragon, is over the kingdoms. All right? And then it gets the deadly wound, and all the world wanders after the beast. Well, then it says, and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Okay, so, it's after he heals the deadly wound, they worship the dragon. Okay, which at that time, he becomes, you know, the second beast. But, here's the thing, I want you to realize something. The technology that the first beast has, that they are using to even go into the other dimension to bring in evil spirits, open the bottomless pit. Let's see, God is on the throne. God is, they cannot do anything without God's allowing it. It's his, because it's his timing. And, um, you know, God's waiting for something. He is. He's giving the space to repent. He is giving those that are to be his servants in that time to be sealed he is expecting us to be servants of his and 
going out to the lost and doing our best to sound the alarm and uh, reach people. Look, listen to me, please. This time in the world right now, people are hurting. It is a hurting world. They are oppressed. They are tired. It is not just normal times. Okay, everyone I know, it seems like everything goes on and on and on. And I know this in my own lifetime, that it used to be time between tragedies, time between this event that took a lot out of you and then that event. Okay, and it's not anymore. It's boom, 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 boom. You don't even got time to recover from this last tragedy or situation that is just, and I'm talking hard situations, everybody. I'm not talking about breaking a nail and um, having a bad day because you're having a bad hair day. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about people seriously, seriously suffering. Uh, the world, in the world, are seriously hurting. And um, it's a hurting world. And it's making, you know, the love of many grow cold. The heart's grow cold and wax cold and you are to be that fire you are to be that warming touch of Christ and um, giving answers when they're they don't these people that are hurting do not have answers because I'm telling you when you're hurting you do ask why you do want to know why you want to know what's going on and it, you know it, you get to the point where you really want to understand what in the world is going on? And um, strange things are happening, too. Very strange things. Uh, unusual things, medically, are happening. And uh, I had a terrible experience at the emergency room a couple weeks ago. I wasn't the patient, but um, my friend was, and she's young. And she was experiencing symptoms of a stroke and um, the nurse there was like demonically possessed I swear she was it was bad <laughs> and um, you know people are just um, all suffering from something and uh, I just never encountered a medical professional like her and uh, <sighs> very unprofessional, very, very unprofessional, and um, nutty, okay, nutty, kind of that, kind of, like going off, and um, look, I know it's a stressful job, I know it is, you do, you're dealing with life and death, and you're dealing with grumpy people, and you're dealing with emergencies, and you're dealing with, you know, um, but, uh, you know, heaven forbid, uh, I've just never, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. Not even with a colleague. So, you know, I, I just know something's happening, everybody. It's, people are not right. And uh, a lot of people are separating themselves, dissolving relationships, dissolving lifelong friendships. Um... I'm witnessing it. Something is happening to people. And uh, we are to be that light, everybody, in a dark world. And if you get smacked or kicked, you know, I, I guess that's why God let me experience the professional experiences that I've had. Because you learn not to take those things seriously. I mean, I've had people cuss me out and everything. It's like, I feel bad for them. Because I know for them to act like that, they got to be really in a bad place. And sometimes it's not physical pain. Emotional pain. Emotional pain will make you say things and act out in a way that you never knew you would. You wouldn't even recognize that person had they not went through something like that. And, um, you know, that's what darkness does, too. It likes to create bitterness and evil. And, um... It's easy to absorb it. It is. And um, it's like you can take a person that's in a bad mood and having a really 
like a behavioral problem or a meltdown or just angry at the world, right? <clears throat> you can put them in a room full of people. And it will affect every human being in that room. And they'll all feel that darkness and get funny, okay? And then you can take a person who is of light and smiling and doing, you know, their job to lighten the load of people and you'll even have people that will think there's something wrong with you because you do have that light about you or you will get people who um, don't like you because you're smiling and um, it's not as contagious. Darkness is very contagious, everybody. And that's why we have to be grounded, grounded in Christ. And bolted onto the rock and in that ark because we cannot absorb that darkness. You understand? You are in it, you can experience it, but you cannot absorb it, and it is not that easy sometimes. And I've noticed in my walk, it is the one the closest to you <laughs> that can affect you. Um, I can take it from a stranger all day long. I'd be like, uh, what is your deal? I'll pray for you. And you get to walk away from them. But when they live with you or they're in your home or they're, you know, they're someone you have to talk to on a regular basis and you're even kind of responsible for them because they're not all uh, able to take care of themselves. Uh, it is. <sighs> That's where God squeezed me really hard. <laughs> so. I'm just saying, guys, it's going to get dark, and you cannot absorb it, and you cannot go around with a chip on your shoulder and, uh, you know, let it go off your back uh, like a duck's back, water off a duck's back, because um, look at the situation and say, could I have handled that better? What am I seeing? Look at, at it with your spiritual eyes, because um, it's easy to pray for someone you like. But you should be praying for those you don't like even more. I mean, that are mean, okay? Because <laughs> they need it. Well, I think we'll pause here because we've been on here a long time. I decided to just put it all in one instead of doing two. And um, we are going to uncover this beast. And we are going to just go through the trumpets and... Um, Time is getting short, and uh, we've just got to move forward, everybody. We've got to press, press forward, okay? And um, I love you guys, and uh, I'm glad for anyone else that is new here. And uh, I hope that I help you in your walk. And uh, that's what we're here for, for each other. And it's times that, like this, that the brethren need edification between the two and prayer, prayers and praying and um, communing and um, doesn't mean we always have to agree. Uh, I think that if we have some differences, I think that we are all mature enough Christians here and uh, to understand what we are doing in our own walk with God and what our calling is and what our purpose is and we we can rise above anything that we don't necessarily see eye to eye on because um, the devil would have us focus in on those things. And believe me, I told you guys before, I take very seriously my responsibility here. And um, believe me, I have dug things out and I dig. And I hope that's what you experience while you're here and you study with us, and um, I hope that that's what you see, is that we dig it out. And it might not necessarily be something we agree with. It might not necessarily be something that we want to see or know. It, you know, I am very careful and uh, where I go with things, because I know how people can run with stuff, and um, I've experienced it. You know, I, I've seen it, too where people will take something and then really go all out the window with it. And um, 
even, you know, we go by the Word of God, we go to the authority of the Word, we dig deep to understand the, the language it was written in, um, because that is the key to understanding. It opens and unlocks the door. Um, translation loses things. And, uh, you know, those that did these, uh, did the King James uh, translations, I do believe they did their best. And, you know, there could have been a day where somebody really hankered in it. Um, I think that happened on East, the Easter word. And, um, you know, we're not going to get into a bunch of the stuff that a lot of Christians bicker about. I'm not going to do it. Um, it, I think it's waste time, precious time that we have right now. And, um, I think you all know I don't promote certain things and, um, you know, what my stance is on Easter. So you can just imagine that I, I have an understanding between pagan and what is of God. So, um, One more thing I wanted to mention before I go, and uh, I did, I don't know if I, re I couldn't remember if I said it or not, but in the sign um, of September 23rd, 2017, that you know, is being said that it's the woman, um, and it meets Revelation 12, and then the great red dragon, um, that I, I'm telling you, I looked at that myself, as far as, um, on Google Sky Maps, and um, I kind of do that on Stellarium too, but it is blocked out in the infrared. There is something there, everybody, and they're blocking it out. You can see the rays um, that's coming off of it. I don't know. You know, something is there, and um, supposedly the picture that has I showed you of the Great Red Dragon that is behind that blocked part of Google Earth, or I mean Google Sky, um, was taken with a infrared, I showed it to you, I showed it to you how it looked like the Hurricane Matthew, that's what it reminded me of, the mouth, um, and the demonic face, um, keep in mind that Christ was born at the Feast of Tabernacles, and, um, he was not born in December, and uh, he was, I guess you could say, conceived in December, and uh, the Holy Conception, and um, he was not born December 25th, and he was more than somewhere around the time born, at, we know the Feast of Tabernacles. Look, they've hankied with the calendar, they've hankied with the Sabbath, they've hankied with everything, so the timing is all off. Okay, but we do know that is the season, that is the time, somewhere around September, you know, that third week of September, he was born. And this sign is there on his birthday. And most Christians do not even realize that. And it's just like the crucifixion. The crucifixion happened on a Wednesday, and he resurrected on Saturday, which was the Sabbath. Okay, that the days are, that's, they've done this on purpose, everybody. They have done this on purpose. And um, to change the calendar, you know, now we're going by the Gregorian, which is all by, you know, Saturday is Sat Saturn, Sat Satan, Satan's day. Listen, and it's Sabbath. Do you understand? <laughs> it's just crazy. It, you get a headache trying to figure it all out, okay? And um, even the Jewish people don't go by the right calendar anymore. It, it, it's a mess. It's a total mess, but we know the seasons, and we know that anyone who's done their scholarly research in the Word of God knows that Christ's birthday was at the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? So, that's when he's born, and it's very close, very close to that date. So, we see things happening. I have not even been in the real, you know, on the news uh, as far as looking at the weather or whatever the news is of the earth, earth or anything. I have not looked at that in days. Um, for all I do, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I've been really busy, and um, 
uh, and I just do my Bible studies. I haven't even, I mean, I just feel drawn to only, I have not even watched regular television. Uh, I never was a big person in that, but um, never, you know, years ago I would watch the my series or something that I liked or something, and um, I just, it just doesn't hold my attention, and um, there's just nothing more important to me than hearing another brethren talking about the Lord or studying about the Lord um, on my own or whatever. <laughs> that's all I've had time for besides my responsibilities at, you know, at home. So, well, God bless you all. Um, I am going to come back. We're going to finish this up. We're going to get through this. And um, I'm going where I'm led in it, it gets, it's gotten kind of out of sync, but I'm just going where I'm led, okay? I'm just going where I'm led. Well, I love y'all. I'll be praying for you. Welcome to anyone that's new, and I'm glad you're here. And, um, time is short, you know. Fire has been called in the building and theater too long, too many times, and now people have gone to sleep. And uh, now it's really time to sit up, perk up, and really pay attention and really make sure our hearts are rended and that we repent, not just for ourselves, that we repent for this nation, that we repent for, you know, anything that comes to mind that God would bring to our hearts to have repentance for intercessory prayer is so powerful everybody I cannot tell you how powerful it is um, you know I hope you are understanding of the power of the anointing oil uh, it's not that the oil has the power it is the obedience that you do it in it is powerful anoint your homes prayer walk your homes uh, it's time to seal up spiritually okay well, I love you guys. Uh, I hope you have a great, great evening. And, um, you know, I'd love to hear from you guys. If there's anything spiritually you are experiencing or you've got something, an experience that you want to share that we could talk about in the scripture or something that's coming. Um, you know, I do believe God is revealing His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, showing people things. And, uh, you know the difference when you have one of those dreams or something. You know, you know, God speaks to your heart about it. And you know it's like a totally different feeling than just having a dream. <laughs> but, um, I've not been able to remember my dreams in the last week or so. But, well, God bless you. And I will see you soon. God willing, we will be back. We're going to finish this up. We are going to talk about what is coming next. God bless.